Hi everyone, welcome to the Bison Post Game Show presented by Gate City Bank. I'm Logan Campbell, Jeff Kolpak, Kyle Emanuel, Mike McPhail. Join me in Bozeman, Montana, where we just witnessed an instant classic as NDSU took down the sixth seed Montana State 35 to 34 in an overtime thriller. Have we all caught our breaths? Can we believe what we just witnessed? You know what it reminded me of is Eastern Washington 2010 only. Yeah. The outcome was different with NDSU on the scoreboard. You know, it's cold, it's December, it was snowing in eastern Washington, it wasn't snowing here, but it had the same drama, overtime drama. It came down to some play that just will go down for the ages. Hunter Pontius blocked the extra point for NDSU to secure the win. We were down on the sidelines. We were hearing all the players saying, that was Hunter Pontius, that was Hunter Pontius. <laughs> A 6'7 offensive lineman, we were like, no, there was no way that that was him. Right, because everyone's trying to figure it out who, who blocked it, who blocked yeah. it. And we hear a couple of players and we're like, that, that can't be possible. You guys know he plays offensive line. We've actually done this before. I was playing the NFL, we used to do this, and we'd stick the biggest offensive lineman, the tallest guy in there, but it didn't work. Like the, and the fact that this is the first week that they put it in, right? And this is the first time mm -hmm. they try it. And for him to go one for one on the field, he's got, I'm sure it'll be on social media, he's got the picture with, with the um, with The, the ball print, yeah. yeah. The yeah. ball <laughs> arm, right? yeah. The scene, I mean, it's, it's like Herman you Munster. Gotta, over you got to get that arm, right? tattooed, right? I mean, that's I like one of the should. greatest moments. Yeah, <laughs> you have Bozeman to. Bozeman block, is that what we're going to gonna call it? Whatever. I, mean, oh, it's just, I like it. I, I like it. What we saw you should have Colfax's job. What are you doing? Come on. The Bozeman block, I talked with one of the NDSU's coaches. They said that they implemented that play just this week they called it the viking because of how low that montana state's kicker kicks the ball you've covered this team for years where does this game stack up in the game wow. that you've covered? i mean i mean we were talking earlier it's it's got to be an all-timer right i mean it's not for national championship it's not even to get to frisco it's only a second round game but considering that's on the road in bozeman with eighteen thousand loud engaged fun fans Maybe an NDSU team that isn't quite at the level that it has been, especially defensively in the past. Um, a Montana State team that had aspirations to win a national championship. And NDSU was down on the mat about five times today. I mean, they just they got socked by George Foreman with his grill in his hand about five <laughs> times today. And they kept getting back up off the mat. And they won the game. And we're all sitting in the press box going, what just happened mm -hmm. here? It was amazing. And by the way, something the press box also said, yeah, that was number 76, Hunter Pontius, and I went, no, that, no, it's not right. That is, no, he, that, he does not play on special teams. You're wrong. What a special moment for that young man. Like you said, for three quarters, it was really back and forth, and you were wondering, when is NDSU going to string it together? If they are going to string it together, what was it in the fourth quarter that flipped the switch for the Bison? Well, I thought it was cooked, and unfortunately, Tommy Milan had a great game, amazing game. He was just tough to stop all day, he threw for two touchdowns, ran for two touchdowns. I thought his injury, in a way, was a, a sort of a changing of a, it was a downer for Montana State. Mm -hmm. They had third and two, a lot gets a one yard loss, and then he's down on the turf, and this whole place is silent yeah. for the first time all afternoon. And I feel like that just sort of, in some way, turned things a little bit. Then the Bison ripped off that TK Marshall um, 29 yard touchdown run and tied, and, that, and then you're off. It's down to one play after that at some point. Well, and Brent Vegan said after the game that it, it they, they got, Montana State recovered from the injury to Tommy Malott. I mean, a difficult thing. But Sean Chambers, the backup, or the, the second quarterback, however you want to phrase it, came in. And Brent Vegan said when they, when they got the ball deep in NSU territory, you just can't take the sacks that he mm -hmm. took. You, you, know, you, you have to get rid of the ball. You have to throw it. If you think somebody's open, you just can't do what Sean Chambers did, and he took the sack to put him out of field goal. Well, and I, I thought one of the other things too was penalties a little bit for Montana State. You're like they're driving down, they're about to take a two-score lead. They get a couple penalties. NDSU finds a way to stop, and you know. And I'm sorry if I'm stealing this from you, Logan, because I'm sure we're gonna get to it. But who would have thought Cam Miller goes four for 13 for 65 yards, and NDSU wins this game? I thought that's how they're gonna have to win the game. That's what we were talking pregame with the wind. And the wind, I don't think, was as big of a factor. But if they can't throw the ball, how do they find a way for them to go? I think it was over 300 yards against this Montana State defense and, and Montana State also threw the ball really well which I thought that was the X factor for them so yeah. it was just mm -hmm. it's it's wild the way that this one unfolded Montana State's gained 506 yards I mean so NSU's defense gave up over 500 yards third time in the last four playoff games by the way they've given up 500 yards and they won the game on the road yeah. with Cam Miller throwing for like 62 yards like Kyle said it's just I mean, remarkable well, and Cam said that he looked over, saw his parents in the front row, and he said that gave him that extra energy to just turn it on during the final minutes of this game. And it's been saying to his team all 
week long. We just have to win by one point. We just have to win by one point. They did that. They survived and advanced to the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs. But this is an emotional win. We know how hard it is to play after an emotional win, especially on the road against a Valley opponent down in South Dakota. How do you take this and bring the momentum to Vermilion? Right. Well, I don't want to sound too cliche, but you know every every game, it's 24 hours, right? You win, you lose, you, whatever. You, you celebrate it and you appreciate it, and then you move on, you learn from it. You know, the good thing for this team is that a lot of these guys have been there before, right? They've been around emotional wins. They've had the, the big wins in the Valley, the big wins in the playoffs, and you, yeah, you're exactly right. You, how do you move on? I think it's, I don't want to say it's easier, but the fact that it's a team that I thought NDSU came out flat against when they played USD, and now they came out and, or they've proven they're a better team than maybe we thought, but I think that maybe helps it, 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 the, the rematch right the the, right. the revenge factor that's what this team has for next week the other thing with ndsu is i mean i, I think everything from here on is gravy you know i mean i i know they want to win next week you always try to win every game but i think just getting out of here with the victory with sort of some of the issues they've had over the course of the year they've played better but everything from here is gravy and it delays an off season maybe that I mean, there's some questions. What's going to happen in the off season? I mean, they're just right. it's with the modern era of the transfer portal and everything going on in college sports today. It's it's one more week that this team stays together, and we'll see how it turns out. Transfer portal opens Monday, right? Yeah, yeah, it Will does. Everybody be here. Yeah, yeah I mean that's, that's, the that's other a, question. A, that's a legitimate question. I mean, we've seen what happened with North Dakota once they lost their playoff game. They've had some of their better players have already their best players have already gone to the portal, and I mean, every team is going to be affected. It's just how long you play, maybe, and, and we'll see what happens. Unfortunately, it's just a matter of time with how college athletics is nowadays with the transfer portal. But like you said, they're going to need all hands on deck when they go down the road to South Dakota. We, they already lost them earlier this year. What's it going to take for them to get that win down in Vermilion? Why well, don't Hunter Poncho be there? <laughs> He'll be there. <laughs> Five years, he's been sticking it out of the program and, and you know, in a reserve role, just grinding it out in practice. And here he makes uh, one of the great plays It'll go down and, and, yeah. and buys a playoff history. It will. Absolutely. Jeff Bentram, the pitch, Hunter Pontius, yeah, the block. He here, by the way. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you are can, we calling this game? You can use that game? in your column, Jeff. <laughs> We're calling this a Bozeman block? Sure. Yeah. Bozeman uh -huh. block game? All right, you heard it here first. Uh, NDSU able to pull away with a 35-34 to overtime thriller over Montana State here in Bozeman, Montana. So for Jeff Colpack, Kyle Emanuel, Mike McFeely, I'm Logan Campbell. Thank you so much for watching the Bison Post Game Show presented by Gate City Bank. We'll see you all down in Vermilion next week.